Good morning, afternoon to everyone. This is Dr. Elizabeth G. Almanza from the Philippines. I will be presenting a paper online entitled The Use of Information and Communication Technology, ICT, and Restructured Learning Material, RLM, in Science Teaching. This is the flow charts of the research process. This will describe and explain what this study is all about. This study examines the effects of the three methods of teaching on the achievement of students in chemistry. The three methods of teaching are the ICT, RLM, and traditional method. The ICT as a teaching strategy makes use of computers, LCD, internet, and non-print materials, while the RLM is a strategic intervention material enhanced instructional approach. This consists of self-paced worksheets with the following parts title card, guide card, activity cards, assessment cards, enrichment card, and answer key card. The traditional method makes use of the chalk and board as instructional aids. Three intact classes in chemistry were grouped into three. Group 1 was subjected to the ICT integration in teaching chemistry. Group 2 was exposed to the RLM and Group 3 underwent the traditional method. Groups 1 and 2 were the experimental groups while Group 3 was the control group. In each group, the students were categorized as low and high ability levels according to their grade in chemistry. A pre-test and mental ability test were administered to the respondents before they were exposed to the three teaching methods. These were used as covariates since this can influence the achievement of the students. To avoid bias results, all the respondents must have equal entry point. The effect of the three teaching methods was measured in terms of post-test scores. And the performance of the students in the post-test were then compared. The different teaching methods were also compared in the light of the differing ability of students group as high and low. Furthermore, the existence of the interaction effects between teaching methods and ability grouping was also considered in this study. The topics considered in this study were mole, percentage composition, empirical and molecular formula, types of chemical reactions, classifying and balancing chemical reactions, information from balance equation, 
endothermic and exothermic reactions and factors affecting rates of reaction. The results of these specific problems sought for in the study. Problem 1. What is the level of achievement of students in chemistry in terms of their pre-test and post-test mean scores? Based on the table, the students have the same entry behavior in the pre-test which is low. But in the post-test, there was gain in scores in all the treatments and the level of achievement was moderate. Problem 2. Is there a significant difference in the academic achievement in chemistry of students subjected to the three methods of teaching using mental ability and pretest as covariates? Based on the table on comparison of the achievement of students subjected to the three methods of teaching with mental ability and pretest as covariates, there is a significant difference in the academic achievement in chemistry of the three groups of respondents. Based on the table on the comparison of the mean difference on the academic achievement in chemistry of the three groups of respondents subjected to the three methods of teaching with mental ability and pretest as covariates, the table showed that the students taught under ICT and RLM performed better than those students taught under the traditional method. Both methods are equally effective in improving students' understanding of concepts in chemistry. Problem 3. Is there a significant difference in the academic achievement in chemistry between high and low ability group regardless of the three teaching methods? Based on the table on the comparison of the achievement of high and low ability students regardless of methods of teaching with mental ability and pretest as covariates, there is a significant difference in the academic achievement of students in chemistry between high and low ability levels, where the high ability group perform better than the low ability regardless of the te teaching method. This implies that the three teaching methods could enhance the performance of the high ability group. Problem 4. Is there a significant difference in the academic achievement in chemistry between the high and low ability group under its method of teaching? Based on the table on the comparison of the achievement of high and low ability students under its method of teaching with mental ability and pretest as covariates, under the ICT, the high ability group performs significantly higher than the low ability group as shown in the difference of their mean scores in the chemistry test. Under RLM, both the high and low ability groups perform well, meaning the teaching strategy is effective for both groups. Under the traditional method, the high ability group significantly perform higher than the low ability group. Problem 5. Is there a significant interaction between the three methods of teaching and the ability groupings of students with regards to their achievement in chemistry? Based on the summary table on the achievement of the two groups of students exposed to ICT, RLM, TM methods of teaching with pretest and mental ability as covariates, the interaction between the methods of teaching and ability grouping is significant. 
This means that the achievement of students in chemistry is not only affected by the teaching methods but also the ability groupings. The graphical presentation of the interaction effect. When comparing the group means between ICT and TM and RLM and TM, low ability students achieve better in ICT and RLM than in TM. If the lines are to be extended, they will meet. This means that the interaction between teaching methods and ability grouping is significant. This implies that the achievement of students in chemistry is not only affected by methods of teaching, but other factors such as ability levels of students could also affect their achievement in chemistry. Conclusions of the study. Number one, information and communication technology and restructured learning material are more effective methods of teaching than the traditional method in terms of the post-test of the respondents. Two, all three methods, namely ICT, RLM, and TM, showed that the high-ability students perform better than the low-ability students. 3. High-ability students can adapt to all three methods of teaching. 4. The low-ability students perform better when exposed to the ICT and RLM only. 5. The high and low-ability groupings of the students can be a factor of choosing the appropriate method of teaching. 6. Results of the interview showed that the students enjoyed their sessions in the ICT, which made learning chemistry interesting and enjoyable, which led to a better acquisition of science concepts. Even the students subjected to the RLM found the worksheet simplified and self-explanatory. Recommendations The ICT and RLM can be used in the teaching of science, particularly in teaching difficult and abstract concepts in chemistry like mole, percentage composition, empirical and molecular formula, and identifying and balancing chemical equations. Two, ICT and RLM as teaching methods are applicable to classes that are grouped either homogeneously or heterogeneously. 3. Traditional methods of teaching could be enhanced with the use of audiovisual aids so as to make it more effective for low-ability students. And 4. A replication study is highly recommended in other subject areas. Thank you very much for listening. I wish to acknowledge and thank the, the coordinators and organizers of the Ubiquitous Learning Conference 2012 for giving me this rare chance of presenting my paper. Kudos.